Anyway, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to our presentation about transfer tips from going to community college to university. So I think we will take a second to see if anybody else pops in. And my name is Michael and I'm with Coconino Community College. And if I could, we could have you guys in the chat box, go ahead and put the school you're with and where you're from. So that way we get an idea of who is here with us today. We already got some information from Victor, but uh, for the rest of you, while we're still waiting for other students to pop in, if you could just let us know where you're from and your school, that would be great. And just, just a couple little things here is, um, I'm Susan Metzler. I'm with New Mexico State University. I'm an admissions advisor. Um, even though it's an out-of-state university, I am based here in the Phoenix area working with Arizona students. Um, we're asking that during the presentation that you have your microphones off just because of background noise. And we are going to be answering questions. Mike and I are both going to do a brief presentation and then we're going to open it up for any sort of questions that you might have. Um, when we are asking questions, you can either turn your microphone on or your camera on and ask us in person, you can put it in the chat. We don't mind. We're pretty flexible, but we'll do our best to answer any of the questions that you might have. But we just do ask that um, you wait and hold the questions until the end because we will do our best to get to every single question that you have. Right. But if you think of a question during the presentations, go ahead and put it in the chat. But please, if you're going to want to talk to us directly, just wait till the end of the presentations. So we would appreciate that. And I guess we can go ahead and get started, Susan, so that way we stay on schedule and people don't leave because they're like, uh, it's nine o'clock. Hello. Mm -hmm. Anyway, good morning again. Mike Lino with Coconino Community College here in Flagstaff, so we're at the community college up north. And then also we have... Me, hey, Susan Metzler. <laughs> there we go, from New Mexico State. <laughs> Anyway, so what we are going to do, let me go ahead and pull up my presentation here. Yeah. Okay, so you're able to see that, right, Susan? Yep. Okay, great. The, uh, okay, so again, community college to university tips, again, it's me and Ms. Metzler. And first of all, what we'll be covering here is we're going to cover about credit hours, community college, university admission requirements, transferability and cost. And what we found working with students and hearing from other universities is that students who started a, with a transfer program get their, get their associate's degree at a community college and transfer to the university, they're a little bit more successful and they have this structure and discipline. So when they transfer over, they have no problems. So again, if you need a little bit of structure and discipline starting at community college, it's a great place to start. So. Okay, a little bit of information here about credit hours, credits or hours. When you start taking classes at a university or community college, higher ed, they're going to assign credit hours to a class. And so we, some of you may already be in dual enrollment classes in your community there. So you're already familiar with credit hours. But for those of you who are not familiar, I'm going to have some sample classes here on the left side of the screen, like they'll assign an English class three credit hours, math anywhere from three to five hours, depending on the level of math from college math up to Calc one, two, three. Sciences, generally four hours, foreign languages are four hours. So it's just a measurement. It's not also, don't think of it as clock time. It's just a measurement to get from point A to point Z. And also, it's not the number of hours of the class where each week, how many hours you are set, sitting in a classroom setting. Again, over here on the right side here, the degrees and certificates, a certificate is 30 credit hours. All these classes on the left side here that are assigned to a course 
are embedded in the certificates, the associate's degree, the bachelor's degree. So here the bar graph. A certificate <laughs> is, is, doesn't, is not a degree. It just gives you some training, some skills. Like we're here at Coconino Community College. Our, one of our more popular certificate programs is our medical assistant. And the medical assistant is when you go to the doctor's office, they take your vitals, they'll weigh you, they'll take your blood pressure, get all those basic, that basic information. Then they will hand you over to a physician. And for the certificate, it's generally about two <laughs> semesters, fall, spring, and then you go right into the workforce. And that's what a certificate is. And that's what you can, uh, that's what you can receive at a community college and then your associate's degree is generally about 60 hours where you, you like say we have our more popular associate degrees here at Kokinoski are business, fire science, criminal justice, business, hotel restaurant management. And then you can get your associate's degree. And then if you then you can transfer on to the university. So again, certificate here is 30 credit hours. And then 60 hours for your associate's degree at the community college. And then if you start right at the university, going straight to a university from high school, you start at zero hours and then you work directly towards your 120 credit hours for your bachelor's degree. So again, don't think of credit hours as clock time. It's just a measurement of courses to get you to your certificate, your associates or to your bachelor's. And then from after your bachelor's, you can go to your master's or your doctorate. The uh, a full-time status for a student is 12 plus credit hours a semester. And that is about four classes per semester. And um, generally your associate's degree is two years. Your bachelor's degree is, they say it's four years, two year, four year degrees. The, what you're what, what I recommend is coming in as a freshman that you do 12 hours your first semester, get acclimated to the structure of your classes, your homework and balancing it. Possibly you may have a part-time job. So start with 12 hours. And then after that, if you can, I recommend that you bump up to 15 hours, five classes a semester, and then with some summer school. Because if you just do four hours every semester, that two-year or four-year degree is going to be extended. It's going to be a lot longer than two or four years. So again, and you'll find once you start taking classes, it's so much easier than high school. Trust me, education becomes fun in college. And then for admission requirements, uh, Right here, I have samples for the three state universities for U of A, ASU, NAU. What you're going to be needing if you're going to want to go to one of the three state universities and all institutions, they have different requirements. But right now I'm just showing for the three states universities. Uh, you need to have <clears throat> your four years of English from high school. This is graduating from high school. You're gonna need your four years of English from high school, your four years of math, your algebra one, algebra two, geometry, and then a fourth year of higher level, three years of lab science, two social sciences, two foreign languages, and one fine art. And also they will be looking at your grade point average and possibly they'll be looking at your SAT, ACT score. So that's what it's gonna be required for any of the three state universities. Again, other universities are gonna have different requirements. And let's see. Uh, Susie, you wanna give us what your requirements are for admissions to New Mexico State? Well, this is something you know, a little bit different because every university and every state has their own um, requirements that they're looking for. For example, at New Mexico State, we don't have, we have, what our requirements are for the classes that you take in high school is whatever you need to graduate from your high school. So we don't need the two years of foreign language unless your high school requires it. So we basically require whatever your high school requires in order to have you graduate. So that's just us as an example, but the, if you're looking at any university, especially right out of high school, you really need to check with them because every school is a little bit different. 
Okay, thank you. And then yeah. for community college here at Coconino and most of the other community colleges across the state, we have what is called open admissions. So you just need to graduate from high school or sometimes we have students coming in and they take a few years off or they come in with a GED for your, uh, to get admitted into the college. We don't require a specific GPA to come to the community college. No SATs, ACTs are required, no essays. Some of the higher level uh, prestigious schools, you'll need to have an essay and possibly letters of reference to get into some of the more prestigious universities. But here at the community college, I jokingly say, all you need is a pulse. You have a pulse, we're gonna take you. So keep that in mind. So again, when you look at the requirements for the university, if you know you're coming up short uh, to be admitted into a state university, well, they, you know, what I, when I did that, I was coming up short when I applied to the university. So I started at the community college, which was great because I started here at CCC and CCC gave me the structure and discipline to be successful when I transferred over to NAU. So again, um, or you can save some money. And that just leads right into tuition. Ha! Anyway, so, <clears throat> so again, some students may be wanting to save money and start at a community college and transfer over to the university. You can see here right now, here at Coconino, our in-county tuition for students for one semester, for your tuition is going to be about $1,400 a semester for fall then $1,400 for spring. So we're looking about $2,800 for the whole year. And then books, we're looking at another $500 fall, $500 spring. So you can see right here, the tuition at community college is gonna be about $1,900 for a semester. So you double that for fall and spring. So you're looking at about $3,800 for the whole year, $3,800. And so if you go directly to a university, again, this is an estimated of our state universities here. For your tuition and fees, you're gonna be paying $6,000 for fall. And then in the spring, it'd be another $6,000 springtime. Books, 500, we guesstimate. Sometimes it may be more, sometimes it may be less. 500 fall, 500 spring. And our, the parking at a university, Depending on which university you go to, um, I know the three state university is going to be about 500 or 500 plus just for your parking fee for the whole year. So, and at Coconut, I didn't even add that because at CCC, our park permit is only $50 for the whole year. So, again, you're looking at 7,000 for fall and then 7,000 spring. So, you're looking at 14,000. For the whole year. So again, $3,800 community college, $14,000 university, a little bit of difference. So again, if you want to save some money, you may want to start at the community college. And for transferability, all the participants in the on the tour today, all the other booths that you've seen here at the uh, co college consortium tour they need to apply to be a part of the tour and part of the requirement to participate in the tour is that their we their accreditation has to be recognized by other schools so that means students who take classes here at coconina need to transfer over to New Mexico State or New Mexico State was coming to Arizona, their classes, their classes need to transfer. So there are some schools out there where their accreditation is not recognized. So you can take a bunch of classes at a smaller college. And then when you go to a university or transfer to another community college, the classes just don't transfer and you're stuck at taking your English 101, 102 over again, starting with your math, you just start back at square one. So again, the participants in the consortium today, uh, their classes will transfer anywhere. Uh, 
The only thing that will not transfer is technical, inst technical institutions like Universal Technical Institute, UTI, they're part of the program, their classes may not transfer to the community college or university. And that's just because they may have uh, diesel mechanic information where Coconino, we don't have a diesel program. And I'm not sure if New Mexico State has a diesel program, but we just don't have an equivalent for that. So their classes just do not transfer over just to their because they're a technical trade school. And then again, that would fall along with cosmetology. We wouldn't have a hair coloring class here at Coconino, or also there's a heating and air conditioning schools where we don't have an heating and air conditioning program. So again, the technical schools, technical institutions, uh, they you, you may want to check with the school that you're transferring to to see what is going to transfer over. So again, hopefully that made sense. <clears throat> and, and that's the end of my presentation. So I, again, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and, and then we will answer them at the end of the present after Susan presents her section. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Susan. All right, I need to share my screen. Oh, let me stop my share. Okay, it helps. Okay. And let me just move some stuff around here so I can see what I'm doing. And I can see your screen. Can you see it? Is it, is it? All right. Um, once again, my name is Susan Metzler. I'm with New Mexico State University. I'm an admissions advisor at New Mexico State University. Um, I don't know if you heard me say earlier, but I am based here in Phoenix. We also have my colleague, David Cota, who is based in Tucson. And the reason New Mexico State University has two people based in Phoenix and why we're part of the Arizona College Consortium is because we do offer Arizona residents in-state tuition. It's an automatic thing that, that they do receive in-state tuition, and that's why we have a presence here in Arizona. I'm just going to talk about some things from the university point of view, what we're looking at when we're looking at transfer students and just going to give you some tips here. Um, kind of what's the difference between a college and a university? In the United States, we seem to use college as an all-encompassing term of um, higher education, but there is a little bit of a difference. Uh, colleges are, are usually focused on strictly undergraduate education in a bunch of different academic areas. Um, for example, Prescott College, they're part of the consortium. They do offer graduate degrees, but their, their main focus is undergraduate education, those four-year bachelor degrees. Community colleges usually offer two-year associate degrees and um, different types of certificates, and they really focus on education in the community. So um, really, they're very open enrollment. Any student um, you know, who really wants to further their education can go there. Um, they have great student support. If a student, uh, someone in the community maybe doesn't want to work on a degree or certificate and they just want to take a class out of general interest, you know, they're more than welcome to sign up for a class at a community college. So um, they're basically there to serve their, of course, and educate their greater community. Um, a university is a little bit different because we really focus on those higher level degrees, four year bachelor degrees, um, master's degrees, um, professional degrees, doctorates. So we're really kind of taking it one step a little bit further and focusing more on, you know, certain um, fields of study. So like a university is made up really of a variety of colleges. Say you want to be a teacher, you would go into our college of education. So you're still at the university with all of these other students, but you're in like the college of education and take most of your classes. You know, uni means one. So it's a bunch of different smaller College, kind of small individual colleges coming together to create one large university, if that makes sense. So Mike talked about a little, a little bit um, about it because this is something we run into sometimes um, as far as transfer credits, academic versus vocational trade programs. Really, if you're transferring credits, it really needs to be something that we have at the university or something really similar. Um, for example, we don't have automotive repair at the university level, so those credits would not come over. But if you took math, science, English, kind of the traditional um, college classes, academic classes, where you sit in a classroom and have textbooks and, 
you know, take notes, those credits usually do transfer over. Um, one thing that I've come across in my career is that sometimes students think that if they take community college classes in one state, that they won't transfer to another state. And it really has nothing to do with state lines at all. It's accreditation. If your community college or your college is accredited, those credits are good and they're most likely going to transfer over. Um, one thing that is super important is communication. When you're coming out of high school and you're starting at a community college and you know you're going to want to transfer someday to a university, it's asking questions, not just relying on what your friends say or what you've heard or how it used to be, because things change. Most colleges and community, you know, especially community colleges have a transfer office or a transfer specialist, someone who will help you. So early in your community college career, it's really important to find out who, where this office is and, you know, go to them for information. They'll help you, you know, talk to them, see if they have any tips um, and make a list of the universities that you might want to transfer into um, and, and check with them. Like I said, don't just rely on word of mouth or what you think it is. Actually talk to someone at the university to find out if you're on the right track. Um, what are their transfer policies? You know, how many lower level transfer credits they will accept. That's something that we see sometimes. Someone will start at a community college and they will take tons of classes. They'll have way more than 60 credits. And then they'll go to transfer and find out that not all of these credits will transfer over because they have too many lower level credits. And for a bachelor's degree, you do need a certain amount of higher level credits. Um, a lot of universities will have transfer scholarships. So that's something to look into too. And also to some students, I think, are maybe a little hesitant to transfer. They're nervous. Um, they're thinking they're, they're basically starting over, going to a new school, having to learn how that school runs, how things are. It's bigger. Um, you know, they, they feel a little out of place. But a lot of universities, like, Ours has special programs for transfer students. We have special um, learning communities in our residence hall just for, for transfer students. We have you know, special orientations just for transfer students in different you know, clubs and groups, just for a way to kind of have, um, to help those transfer students adapt to a university and just help to meet people and make friends. So most universities now, because we do have so many transfer students do have lots of support and programs for our transfer students in place. So some classes that might not transfer, we've talked about this a little bit with the um, kind of technical vocational classes, but one thing that doesn't transfer are what we're calling refresher prerequisites. When you're starting at a community college, maybe you take an Accuplacer test and you're not really ready for college level math yet. Um, and so the community college has you take a refresher course just to kind of prep you Go over some things, relearn some things, and have you prepared for college level math. And I'm using that as an example so that you are successful. So those refresher class that you the refresher classes that you take to get ready for college level classes aren't going to transfer. Um, classes that we might not have at the university, even if you, they are an ap academic class that you have at the community college. If there's a very specific program, um, for example, Coconino, they have forestry. Um, and in Mexico State, we don't have forestry, but you would be taking a lot of like botany and, and different environmental classes. But if you're taking something that's super specific just for forestry, there's a chance that that might not transfer just because we don't have that. Again, too many lower level credits. Um, there is a limit on how many transfer credits you can bring over with you. At most universities, check with the university or the college. Real, real quick, uh, Susan, yes. uh, if you want to go back. the What I just wanted to mention was, uh, you know, for those of you coming into the college, you guys already know what areas you're strong in. So again, like her example was math. Now, some of you may, or you already know if you're not strong in math or say English, and, and it's okay. That's why you're going to school to learn. <laughs> So, so don't feel bad if you have to take a lower level math or English class 
to get you, because you need to get the building blocks to move up to the next level. So again, don't feel like, oh my God, I didn't get into the college math. I didn't get into English 101. It's okay. There's a lot of students out there that do not go right into the courses they want to go to because yeah. for some reason they don't have the building blocks. So uh, again, it's okay. And, uh, and that's where you're going to school. Anyway. I'm one of them. I mean, I am, I graduated from college with a very good GPA, but I'm horrible at math and struggled with math in high school. I was in like honors classes for everything but math, and I was kind of in a lower level math. So when I started college, I was not ready for college level math. That's why I used it for an example. And so I did have to take like refresher, some refresher math classes to prepare me for college level math. And it was great because I would have totally failed my first, you know, college level math class if I had not taken those refresher. Right. We want to make sure you're successful. So we put you in the level that you're at and then you just move to the next level and you just keep plugging away. All right. Yeah. yeah. That's all I have to okay. say. That's all right. But talking about community college, sometimes people think I'm going to go to community college because my friends are all going to like ASU and U of A and, you know, uh, Utah State. You know, they're going out of state. They're doing something um, that somehow seems maybe a little bit to a high school student. They're thinking, oh, it's more exciting. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm starting off at a community college, but that is so not a good way to look at it. You know, it's one of those things, it's, it's not where you start, it's where you end up. And this is just an example of some incredibly successful people that started or took advantage of their local community colleges. Um, Aaron Rodgers, as we know, is the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, right, Dana? And um, he actually was a high school athlete who was not ready for a division one football, but really wanted to play football. And he started at Butte Community College before transferring to UC Berkeley. And we can see that worked out really well for him. Um, Eileen Collins is the first woman to pilot the space shuttle. And she started at Corning Community College in New York before transferring after two years to Syracuse and then going on and um, earning graduate degrees from Stanford. And then this is something that you should Google Tom Hanks. We all know who he is. He wrote an article several years ago for the New York Times that was titled, I owe it all to community college because he was kind of not, kind of didn't know what he wanted to do, didn't take school super seriously, he started at community college and really felt like he found himself. He found what he was interested in. He really, um, became a really good student and really loved his time at his community college. And he said it made him who he is today. So that's fantastic. Um, and then Steve Jobs actually started at a four year traditional college, Reed College, a very good college, but he dropped out. But then later on, he realized that he did have gaps in his education and took classes at um, a community college. And then some other very famous community college students, Morgan Freeman, George Lucas, Queen Latifah, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was already successful, um, had a career when he went to community college, but he felt that his English skills, reading and writing were not where they should be. So he went back to college at, and, and took English classes. And even Walt Disney was a community college student. So just some things that you need to know planning ahead. And this is something that surprises students sometimes is that the community, the GPA that you earn at community college may not transfer to the university. Well, your credits will transfer, your, your GPA will not. So you're almost like starting over again with the GPA. This is the same oftentimes for dual enrollment credits. So if you're in high school and you're taking dual enrollment, um, maybe you've got A's in English 101 in um, a dual enrollment class. But that does not mean that that A is transferring over to the university, just the credits are. This is something that happens sometimes. So then you're thinking, well, why should I even try that hard in community college if my GPA isn't going to come with me? Um, the reason that you really, really should is because any grade lower than a C may not transfer. Once again, depends on the college or university. And if you wanna qualify for a transfer scholarship, you're going to have to have a good community college GPA. So you should always do your best. And that is just a reason why you really should do your best. Even though a D is passing, 
that might not transfer over. So that's something that you really need to check with the university or community college. Um, another thing is some majors may require you to take additional coursework over 120 credit hours at the university to, to get a bachelor's degree. Certain things like um, certain engineering programs or even programs in the medical field require very, very specific coursework that might not be available at your community college. Um, for example, if you're going coming to our school and you want to major in aerospace engineering, there may be required classes that students have to take that they don't have at a community college. So students may go for a little bit longer just to complete that degree. So there, that is something, depending on what you're interested in studying, you might want to do a little research and look into that and see what the required classes are for that major. So the kind of my big takeaway is be familiar with the process early. Don't wait until you're finishing your second year at a community college to figure out what you have to do to transfer to a university or what the university needs. This is something when you're coming out of high school, you should start doing your research. And once again, transfer advisors at the community college and at the university, they're there to help you. Also too, most of the community colleges in Arizona do have transfer fairs, usually once a year where they have student, uh, a whole bunch of different universities and colleges that attend that are there just to share information with potential transfer students. So even your first semester, if there is a transfer fair, you know, you can attend and start doing your research then. Okay. So there, there you go. And, uh, and I just wanted to expand on your last slide there, or a couple of things you had touched on, is there are a ton of transfer students now going to, or students at Key Community College that are going to transfer to the university. So the universities have recognized the large number of transfer students. So again, like Susan pointed out, there's transfer offices, there's recruiters at the university that just deal with transfer mm -hmm. students, and there mm -hmm. are offices at the community college that deal, that have contacts with the university. So uh, again, there's a large number of transfer students. It's just an, a matter of seeking out these offices. And once you meet with an academic advisor and you let them know that you plan on transferring, then they could probably recommend who the transfer office, transfer specialist is, and then get you in touch and to help you fill out applications to the universities and give you transfer days at the universities that you can, can attend. And uh, there's just so many resources out there for the students. So keep that in mind. And also another big plus about going to community colleges is the smaller class sizes. Usually at my community college, the average class size is about 25. And, uh, you know, so if you're not ready to go large and go to a university where sometimes you may be sitting in a classroom of 50, 75, 100, 200 students, if you're not ready for that, you can start at community college with smaller class sizes, smaller community, just get that structure. And then once you go over to the university, you're gonna have, you'll just sail right on through. Mm -hmm. I used to work at a high school here in Phoenix as their college and career advisor and a student who was, she was fine. I mean, she was a good student. She wasn't a great student in high school. Um, and she went to a Maricopa Community College and she came, stopped by after like halfway through her first year to say hi to me. And she, I, I wish I could have taken before and after. She was so happy. She was, she loved college. She did not love high school, but she loved her classes at community college. She loved how she said the instructors and professors, she said she felt they, they treated her more like an adult versus a kid um, and how she met in her class, like so many interesting people. You know, you go to high school, you're with the same people all the time and how I think part of college is not just learning information from a faculty member, but also from each other. You know, and she was in class with um, some people that, you know, graduated from high school, started working or, you know, started families and now we're going back to school. She said that she had some of those people in her classes that really added a lot to her, you know, educational experience. And she was just so happy and just loved her college so much. So, you know, it, it, she, she knew that she really wasn't ready to go to a university. Um, 
academically and just it was so nice to see her and just to see how much she'd grown up in a semester and just how happy she was at her community college. Okay, so those were our presentations. So do we have any questions from any of the students or any of our guests? Uh, if you wanna just go ahead and, I didn't see any questions in the chat. So anybody has anything they'd like to ask? Uh, Mason, if you want to go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and ask your question. Oh, you were unmuted. Uh, what's your question, Mason? If you don't want to talk, you can just put it in the chat, but feel free to talk. I was wondering um, uh, what qualifications do you need uh, to go into trade school? Uh, what area of trade school are you thinking of? Automotive, welding, culinary, cosmetology, what? Uh, like any construction trade. Okay, construction trade. Okay, so we don't have any construction companies or schools on the tour. So uh, depending on which institution you're looking at, uh, you would need to contact them. But here at Coconino, and I know a lot of other community colleges, you know, we have a construction program. And, uh, and I gave you the requirements to get into the community college here at Coconino. And I'm sure there's other community colleges and uh, or universities that have a construction program also. So, um, you know, if you have any questions, I can give you information about our construction program here at CCC, or you can visit the other booths and to see, you know, look to see what programs are available and they will be able to let you know if they have a construction program. So our construction program of construction management, we have a sustainable green construction program. So again, it's just searching out the other booths. Yeah. Does that help? And yeah, it, thank you. Most trade schools, I think, you know, they each have their own requirements. You know, if you do want to go to a school and learn a, a, a trade, um, I don't know if they require like just a high school diploma or anything additional, or maybe they don't require that. I don't know. So that's just something that you're going to have to um, do a little research and you know ask questions. Find that school that's a good fit for you. Okay, and Tool had a similar question about going into an automotive. Um, you know, you may want to go to the UTI booth here and ask them, or there are other. You may want to Google for automotive programs. There are some community colleges that do have an automotive program an associate's degree in automotive. So it's just a matter of going into the booths to see, yeah, yeah, check with the community colleges first. They are gonna have an automotive program. Universities generally do not have an automotive program. Uh, check with UTI and then on your own, you may want to Google you know, automotive schools and then you can see if there's some locally. And uh, yeah, that would be my suggestion. Do we have any other questions? Questions, comments? Any of our other recruiters have anything else that they may wanna add that possibly we may have missed and, or overlooked? No, I think you did a great job. Well, thank you. Thanks, Dana. Well, if there's no questions or anything else, I'm going to go ahead and turn the recording off. And you guys are, I feel like a teacher, you're excused to leave. <laughs> but as there are some of you who, have, who want to stay after and 
if you didn't want to ask questions within the whole group, we know Susan and I will stick around a few minutes and uh, answer any questions that you may have. Or if there's some other professionals out there that want to talk to us for a second or add your whatever you may want to add. But yeah, you know, everybody else is free to go and go visit the booths and have a good day at the fair. Yeah. Thank you. And come say, some, come say hi to us in our booths. Right. All right. Closing the recording. We'll see you guys uh, later. Yeah. In the recording, you will be able to find the recording. It will be on the College Fair website.